Stella Jones is a leading North American producer of railway ties, utility poles, and residential lumber. Before we begin, this video is not an investment advice and must do your own diligence. However with my experience investing for years the content from this video has a solid research foundation. Check our Patreon on the description below for an inside members only access on what are the best buys now. We will also update you on what to sell for gains or to avoid losses. Subscribe to our channel so you will never miss out. Why buy? Boring can be beautiful, at the right price. It has a long-run, prudent operating strategy in business lines that few others want, mixed with intelligent capital allocation that generates good cash that's then deployed in the service of shareholders. It's finally, cheap enough, to launch a foolish position. The business. To be clear, if you're looking for excitement, we have plenty of other options on the scorecard. If you desire a high-quality business trading at, near a historical low valuation, read on. Boiling it down, Stella Jones is a leading, North American, specialized producer of pressure-treated wood products, with two categories shouldering most of the load, railway ties and utility poles. That's right, railway ties and utility poles, you know, the things that you see out of your car window as you drive through the countryside, or, as I once learned on a mining trip to Elko, Nevada, Nevada's state tree. Railway tie and utility pole sales accounted for about 59% of Stella's total 2021 revenue, a year that marked its 21st consecutive year of top-line growth. Another 28% of revenue came from residential lumber sales, with the remaining 13% from industrial products think highway guardrails, railway bridges and crossings, or foundation pilings, and non-pole quality log sales. Just over two-thirds of sales are south of the border. As you can imagine, it's a very niche, fragmented, though relatively small, industry in which Stella plays. People ain't exactly rolling out of bed and deciding that they're going to start a railway tie operation. The company's footprint and scale give it something of an incumbent advantage, but as demand for its products is fairly steady, low growth, it very much becomes a relationship business to maintain that footprint. Railway tie demand is reasonably consistent, as North American operators upgrade and maintain their networks, most of Stella's business comes from replacement work. A similar dynamic exists for utility poles, although such sales are usually via multi-year contracts in response to public tenders. Stella has 42, for now, wood treating facilities in the US and Canada. I say, for now, because Stella is a company built via steady acquisition, making somewhat of a splashback in early November when it announced the twin acquisitions of Cahaba pressure-treated forest products and Cahaba timber for a total of US$102.5 million. And that's pretty much it. It's a simple business with slow organic growth, with that growth goosed by an intelligent acquisition strategy, history, run by competent capital allocators who stick to their niche. All of this has applied to the story for as long as we've followed it. Here's the dirt on what's changed. Multiple contraction, the bad. Stella Jones was long one of the great undiscovered stock stories on the TSX. The company IPO'd in 1994 and did little of consequence for its first decade. However, in its second decade, 2005 through 2014, the stock price appreciated by 240%. For those scoring at home, that was a market smashing nearly 36% annualized return, before dividends. Such performance, however, attracts investor attention beyond that justified by valuation alone. A lesson market seemed to need to learn every decade or so, and by early 2015, the stock price reached the same level that we're recommending it at today. Despite the company continuing to grow, after a decade-long plus 2,000% run, Stella Jones shareholders have essentially made nothing beyond the dividend for the past seven-ish years. Here's why, and it's not company-related. The word multiple appears in several of those watchlist snippets from above. And when we're considering Stella Jones, and any other company for that matter, here's a critically important formula to have in mind. Stella Jones raises its dividend pretty much annually, but it's historically not been that great of a yield, meandering between 1% and 1.5% most of the time since Stella has been on our radar. Thus, to get a return, here, you've needed to rely on those first two, blue shaded boxes, and that's been a problem. In August 2015, the stock price has declined by approximately 16%. Underlying this return are earnings per share, EPS, that have risen by 98% while the price, earnings multiple awarded has fallen by nearly 58%.
Run that math through our equation above, and it largely explains the decline experienced. Good company performance but bad multiple performance is the very scenario we were guarding against. Multiple contraction, the good, or least not bad. This is the kind of company where you can reasonably rely on history to predict the future. After all, demand for rail ties and utility poles is unlikely to stray from past patterns. Therefore, much of our thesis revolves around multiple contraction no longer being near the issue it's been for Stella Jones since we tuned in. There's no better way to summarize this dynamic than with a historical chart. When it comes to stock prices, we tend to throw charts out the window. It's a different story when it comes to gauging historical metrics and, historically, Stella Jones is essentially trading as cheaply as it ever has. We have no reason to believe this trajectory won't continue, especially if we consider our three to five year time horizon. All of this leaves us investors in a good spot. Remember from the opening information box, boring can be beautiful at the right price. Given the likelihood of earnings growth and unlikelihood of multiple contraction, at worst, we think investing in Stella Jones offers a scenario that's not likely to lose over three to five year horizon. We're unsure of what the gains might be, but the potential for a loss, outside of unforeseeable extreme scenarios, seems minimal. From there, you can start stacking potential upside scenarios, such as the following. Continued acquisitions. Expansion of the lumber distribution business. Ongoing demand for a revamped North American grid given the emergence of renewable power. All of these scenarios can be encapsulated by the multiple the market is willing to pay. Should the multiple mean revert to something between 15 and 20 times, at the upper end, this alone could lead to a near doubling by this recommendation, a return that is especially significant on a risk-adjusted basis. The bottom line, it's a simple business with a simple thesis. We think Stella Jones is, um, simply a company that saw its valuation get away from its underlying fundamentals, resulting in a multi-year slide sideways, even as the business did just fine. We further think that this slide has been long enough and deep enough so as to now tilt the odds of market beating returns back in shareholders' favor. It may not be the sexiest business, utility poles and railway ties, remember, but, hey, with an attractive risk, reward scenario on the table, who are we to quibble? Again, boring can be beautiful. Thank you for supporting our Patreon, don't forget to check our YouTube to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified for any updates. We will be seeing you on our next videos.